The Wall Rider is the main antagonist of the game Outlast and its DLC Outlast Whistleblower. The Wall Rider is a, almost a force of nature and a near godlike being. It is actually seen as a religious icon by Father Martin of the Mount Massive Asylum and the followers of the Wall Rider religion that Martin created. The Wall Rider also seems to cause much of the insanity within the facility, coming in a close second to the morphogenic engine. No matter what it was that caused the insanity in the first place, it is no doubt the Wall Rider causes great terror among all those within its long reach. The Wall Rider is a very ghost-like entity and it is actually a swarm of nanoscopic machines or nanites. The Wall Rider's nanites are actually controlled through a mental link to a host. This host can control the Wall Rider which is also known as the Swarm to do the host's bidding. Because the Swarm is comprised of individual nanites it allows the Wall Rider to take the form of almost any shape its host desires. It also means that the host can dematerialize its form, moving through very small areas that are at the very smallest one nanometer thick. Even though the wall rider can take almost any form, it generally takes humanoid appearance, as seen as a black clouded silhouette muscular man. The swarm can also be spread out in the air in order to basically become invisible to the human eye. The Wall Rider being comprised of thousands and possibly millions of tiny machines gives them the ability to combine their power to conjure great strength. The entity has been seen being able to lift people from the ground, ripping them to shreds. They have the ability to shoot through a body like thousands of tiny bullets, killing the victim in the process. The Wall Rider is unmatched and the creature appears to be nearly unbeatable. It rivals the strength and power of even Chris Walker, cementing the entity's place above all other variants in the Mount Massive Asylum. The Wall Rider, as stated, is able to dematerialize and reform with ease, which can assist with its pursuit of its victims, giving it the ability to phase through most doorways, cracks in walls, etc. About the only thing that can halt the swarm's advance is the decontamination hallway sections, which for some reason the Wall Rider does not dare enter. It is possible that these stations are able to destroy the nanites or somehow shut them down or disrupt the mental connection between the host and the swarm. The Wall Rider was formed out of the concept of creating a perfect and ideal creature that is above the evolution of humanity. The project began with the creation of the Wall Rider nanites. However, it was discovered that for these nanites to form correctly and function as a sole unit, they would need the human host that had suffered through traumatic and horrific memories entering into a near psychotic and lucid dream state. Once in this state, the mind entered a unique conscious form of lucid dream. This state allowed a mental link to be made with the nanites, allowing the host to completely control them. This process known as Project Wall Rider was undertaken by the Murkoff Corporation using research done by German scientists in World War II and Alan Turing. In order to get a human into this fractured and open mind state, Murkoff utilized the morphogenic engine program which could force traumatic and horrific thoughts to drive a human insane and make them eligible for a host for the swarm. This is why the Mount Massive Asylum was chosen as the main area of operations for this project, having ample supply to those with pre-existing mental conditions. Eventually, after many failed experiments, a man by the name of Billy Hope was subjected to the morphogenic engine and was successfully able to control the swarm, forming the Wall Rider. He was forcibly placed into a containment sphere where he could focus on controlling the swarm and nothing but. The catch was that a fractured mind was needed to control the swarm. This caused a massive situation in the facility that got out of control very fast. 
Billy Hope was eventually able to break the swarm's containment, and after he did so, he took to unleashing his great vengeance against the Murkoff Corporation and everyone involved in it, making nearly everyone in the facility a target to the War Rider. Breaking containment, the War Rider is seen by Wayland Park, the main protagonist of the Outlast Whistleblower DLC, who was at the time beginning a round of subjection to the Morphogenic Engine. However, the War Rider cuts the power and Wayland is able to escape his bindings. Soon after, he witnesses the War Rider breaching a containment cell and ripping an inmate to shreds before promptly leaving. Billy then continues on and begins killing almost anyone he can get his nanites on. He is seen numerous times by Wayland either chasing himself or the other inmates of the asylum throughout his time trying to escape the facility. After the arrival of the main protagonist of Outlast, Miles Upsfer, he is subsequently subdued by Father Martin by use of sedatives. Before Miles passes out though, Martin shows Miles on a security monitor the rampage the War Rider was unleashing on the Murkoff PMCs that were acting to harm its host in the underground laboratory area. Miles, similarly to Wayland, continuously spots the War Rider from time to time throughout the facility on his journey throughout the asylum. Eventually, Miles is able to reach the underground area of the facility and finds the torn apart bodies of the PMCs he had seen earlier on the security cams. Soon after, the War Rider gives chase to Miles, who eventually, when trying to evade his attacks, runs into the variant Chris Walker who goes to kill Miles, but not before being viciously attacked by the War Rider itself. Which after choking and bashing Walker, the Swarm suddenly rips him up through a vent, shredding his body into tiny pieces. The War Rider then continues to the upper levels to kill groups of Murkoff PMCs that had begun to attempt to clear the facility and reach a Murkoff doctor in the lower underground area named Rudolf Warnick at the lower levels. Eventually Miles is called to the elderly Dr. Rudolf who reveals that Billy Hope, the host of the Wall Rider, is protecting Rudolf out of some sort of unknown loving attachment Billy had developed for the Doctor for some unknown reasons. Despite Rudolf being in constant pain and basically begging for death to befall him, Billy would not let it happen. Miles learns from Rudolph how to destroy the Wall Rider by basically destroying the host. By disabling Billy's life support system, it would leave the swarm with no consciousness to control it and it would simply dissipate and lose its form. In the meantime, while Wayland Park was fighting off Jeremy Blair to escape the facility, the Wall Rider makes an appearance and much like Walker before Blair, is violently ripped apart by the swarm of nanites which had entered his body and torn him piece from piece from the inside out. This gave Wayland an opportunity to escape while the Wall Rider was distracted killing Jeremy. However, straight after killing Jeremy, the Wall Rider notices something wrong. Back underground, Miles successfully shuts off Billy's life support as Billy begins to die. The Wall Rider Swarm becomes frantic, and it seems that somehow the Swarm had taken on the memories and personality of Billy. The Swarm, after a quick struggle, is able to infect Miles in the meantime, and survives as using him as a new temporary host. However, the Swarm was independent from Miles, unlike it was from Billy. The Wall Rider now is an entity all of its own fused with Billy's consciousness and now using Miles as a host as it appears that despite having its own consciousness, it still needs a host to hold its physical form. Miles, now severely wounded by the ordeal, limps to try and escape the facility once again. However, he is confronted by the Murkoff's PMCs and Dr. Rudolph. The PMCs open fire on Miles, however Rudolph recognises that the Swarm was within Miles now and had taken him as a new host. The Wall Rider then proceeds to massacre the PMCs in the room. 
Shortly after these events, Wayland is making his way to Miles' Jeep at the entrance of the Mount Massive Asylum. However, before he can make his escape, he views a limping Miles exit the facility, and that Miles is surrounded by a massive swarm cloud of Wall Rider nanites. Sometime after the events of the first game, the Wall Rider discards of Miles' body and returns to the body of Billy as it is revealed that he did not die or was possibly revived by the swarm. The Wall Rider possessed the body and used it to escape the facility. Now possessing the consciousness of Billy, the Wall Rider travelled to Billy's mother, who was living in a caravan at the time. Now, once he arrived, he finds that two Murkoff agents were talking to his mother about Billy. Eventually, Tiffany Hope, his mother, reveals that she had sold her son to the Murkoff Corporation for a considerable amount of money. And after hearing this revelation, Billy sprung forth and yelled at his mother that he had loved her. He felt greatly portrayed as the two agents began their escape as the Wall Rider began ripping her apart. Soon, in the vicious attack by the Wall Rider, the caravan was destroyed when some action of the entity caused the fuel tank to explode. Billy Hope's body was now completely destroyed, and without a host, the agents believed the Wall Rider to have been destroyed along with the Hopes. However, unbeknownst to them, the swarm survived by using the host of a nearby ant colony now showing that the swarm could take almost any host it chooses, as it now had the consciousness, namely Billy's, to sustain it in its regular functions. The Wall Rider, now with no family and no purpose in life, chose to continue its rampage on the Murkoff Corporation, destroying as many people, places and things associated with this highly unethical and borderline evil company. The swarm would eventually end up at Templegate Testing Grounds for a new Murkoff project and the Wall Rider successfully began to destroy and damage radio towers and microwave emitters set up by Murkoff. This leads to a version of the morphogenic engine being unleashed upon the residents of the area with flashes of bright light bringing about horrific cases of delusion and insanity below in the Temple Gate region, leading to the events of Outlast 2. But what other videos would you guys like to see? If you have any ideas or have any questions you would like answered, please meet me down in the comments. If you did enjoy the video, please leave a like and go check out Attack Lore and Explained on Twitter and Discord. And if you would like to support me and the channel's content, you can become a patron and get access to behind the scenes, early content and much, much more. I hope you guys did enjoy the video and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.